and he news is back with another solo leveling cut content video let's see what he has to say this was pretty good yeah i will admit i had my doubts but after seeing the first episode the pacing and the fluid animation mm -hmm. i think solo leveling might actually <laughs> <laughs> the best fucking part, dude. Cameraman, dude. This cameraman's crazy. They'd be in pretty good hands with this one. Yeah. Of course, it's not panel perfect like how Freerin is, but when it comes to comparing it with the one... Is Freerin really that perfect? I guess we're talking about like a one-to-one -one translation of the source material to the anime. Webcomic, the dark tone and gritty action is captured fairly nicely. Now, I'm sure that's something plenty of you have read already, so I'm not just going to be comparing the anime to the webcomic, but oh? I'll also talk about how it compares to the novels, too. The right, because there's like the webcomic, but there's also like the novels, right? The novel is the original, and then there's the webcomic, which is like the webtoon that you can like scroll. That pretty much got really popular. But technically, this is like the source source material. A publication that came out three years before the webcomic did. Mm -hmm. It's here. There's plenty more lore related to the world and the hunters within. So whether you and I hear that the anime is getting like it, the anime is based off of not the webtoon but the novels. Am I wrong? Someone was saying that. Your anime only or someone who's read the manhwa. This video and the ones to follow it will talk about all solo leveling has to offer. All right. It's a completely spoiler-free review of what the anime doesn't show us. So, if you want to see weekly videos just like this one, Hell then consider yeah. subscribing since there will be plenty You guys know what to do. Let's Every week, we're going to farm any news just like we did, you know, Mushoku Tensei, fucking uh, Eminence and Shadow. Let's go. It's an interesting choice to start the anime with the teaser for one of the best arts in the entire series. The ant stuff. What I think this means, or at least hope this means, is that they might be planning to eventually get to it. Right, because like everyone, as soon as we started this, we're like, oh my god, Chimera Antar, Chimera Antar, you know, the Hunter x Hunter shit, that's like really hype. But they're saying like solo leveling also has like an ant arc. And we saw that in the intro, people are getting really hyped. So if they're positioning this to be in the intro, then the anime, I don't know, in the second core, the second half of it, will we get there? Maybe season three, season two, who knows? Right. The tease itself does highlight the core elements of solo leveling, so as an introduction to this brand new world, it does do its purpose and familiarizes us with it. Mm -hmm. We were shown hunters and the monsters they face, as well as the immense power both sides were capable of. The threat of death was made apparent right from the get-go, and these the ants are savage. were made clear as well. The thing is, this isn't the way that solo level- Damn, okay, Guildmaster Che looks fucking hype right here. Okay, okay, he looks pretty sick. He got that eyes and haircut too, with the fucking eyes, like the eyeglasses tilt too, and he goes like, "Shh." actually started. It's an excerpt from the thirteenth arc of the webtoon. So, About what? So like the thirteenth arc is being positioned in the middle of the intro of the episode one. Uh, well, it's, it's for st strategic reasons, right? To tease us that this arc is gonna happen in the future, guys. Ninety chapters deep for that, or one hundred and eleven if you're reading the novel. Once again, I'm hoping it is to show that they do plan on making it here, but mm -hmm. if each episode covers four to five chapters each, that would put the start of this arc right between episodes 18 and 22. Yo, let's so go! It definitely Second core. definitely is possible if the pacing continues the way it does, but at the very minimum, it would have to be done through a split core season. And even then, that would only bring us to the start of the arc. So, despite solo leveling being listed for 12 episodes only, I wouldn't be surprised if they announced split its core. continuation yep. shortly after that. Probably, so like by the time this ends in April, right? And then we have another season of anime, probably not then, but then in September, right? September, they might do another one, hopefully. Worst case scenario, it's going to be next January again. But still, I think we can expect a lot more solo leveling. Now, where solo leveling really starts is with the introduction of our world's weakest hunter, Sung. There were plans to localize his name to something like Shun Mizushino, but that's... Shun Mizushino. I'm glad that they kept the Korean names. The thing about the Japanese, um, like Japanese anime, for example, they will compromise and they will like, you know, use the Korean names. But like, if you've seen like Korean manga or like basically Korean translation of existing IP from J Japanese anime, Korean, they always like make it their own. They don't give a fuck what the original names are. They always make a Korean name. Also, hot take. I'm Korean myself. These names aren't too hard to memorize. But something about Korean names is like harder for me to memorize compared to anime names in like Japanese. I'm not sure why. Is it the three syllables? Is it, I'm not sure. A lot of people are saying the same shit. It's like the names are fine, but it's somehow kind of hard to kind of like keep track of. It's a change only present in Japan's TV version of the anime. The version we have from Crunchyroll and Aniplex is separately voiced to include the character names that we know. Mm. So despite the website showing localized names different from the webtoon, 
The ones any of us overseas will be getting are the OG ones. Cool, cool. To focus on the actual content of the story now. Song jin -woo is the weakest because he's pretty much just a normal human. <laughs> yes, he's an awakened hunter just like all the others, but with his awakened to E class to that of an average human and his wounds capable of healing just a bit faster, there wasn't much else to differentiate him from a non- his wounds can heal a little bit faster? Bro, I swear to god, Jiwoo was fucking healing him for like 10 minutes last episode. Awakened person. This would often lead to him getting injured, and more times than not it was for a pay that wasn't even worth it. Why continue being a hunter then? Well, Money. it certainly wasn't because he liked to, Dad's but gone. it was instead because he felt he had to. Mom's in the because hospital? The Hunters Association had a medical aid payout That's tied right. to their payroll. This was a massive help in funding his mother's medical bills. Oh, I didn't know there's actually healthcare involved with it. I thought that he just had to fucking farm those minerals and like sell it to pay for the hospital bills, but okay, okay. If it wasn't, then Sung Jin would have given up his hunter's license years ago. He had no problem going and getting an ordinary job, but it's just that it wouldn't support his sickly mother the way that hunting did. I mean, he was after all a 24-year-old man with no special talent. 24? Okay. Combine this with a debt of several thousand USD a month, <laughs> and what you get is a person whose only choice is to be a hunter. This guy's life fucking sucks. Well, it's fine, because very soon, right, he's gonna get the biggest glow up of all time. But right now, like, it, we're in the, like, the lowest of the low possible. But you gotta start at the bottom if you wanna... We're gonna go a zero to hero, right? So it should be fine. Next now, episode or so. When it came to gates such as these, it wasn't rare for everyone participating to know each other. So he looks 16? Well, that's the Korean skincare routine, guys. You guys have no idea how old I am, and I'm taking my age to the grave. You will never know. I could be fucking 45, I could be fucking 36, I could be 22, I could be 27. Who the fuck knows? Y'all ain't gonna know, because that Korean skincare routine is gonna keep that shit very ambiguous. Since the same hunters were 69? always called <laughs> 69? Upon, they were the ones the Hunter Association would usually assign to this area. The number of jobs they were getting was slowly diminishing though, since the presence of guilds was making gate clearing this highly coveted commodity. You see, there were only so many gates to go around for everyone, and with each guild competing to be the ones to clear it, that meant less were available for the independent hunters. So we get the scraps. Association. It had made for this interesting society in which the very act of dungeon clearing was now something people could make money off of. It's pretty much it just like contract till work, you know? New highly profitable yeah, it's just so fucking gigs, right? There's a bunch of different guild associations and portals open and they got to kind of bid for it. Like, okay, we want that gate, you know, this is ours, you know? So this is very interesting system. They are not, the, the world building is very interesting so far for me. Industry. So, with every gate having the potential to bring in millions, mm. it was only natural these private guilds be the ones to try and capitalize on it. It had gotten to the point where the only gates left over for the Hunter Association were these smaller low rank ones not even worth doing for the guilds. Luckily, this meant those gates were usually easy and safe, but usually. what it also meant was that there was a lot of profit in them. No guild typically meant not a lot of money. Sure, that also indicated the difficulty would be low too, but even that wasn't known for sure in this business. There were still numerous hunters who carried themselves with quite a bit of worry here. Such was the nature of taking a job like this. What quickly changed that mood to something better though was the arrival of Sung and the message he brought with him. Is oh, because like, if he's in the party, I think they specifically mentioned in the anime, right? If the weakest, you know, hunter alive is in the party, then you know that this raid is going to be so safe and so easy. See, if the Hunter Association judged this gate to be one that Sung Jin Woo could handle, then... I want you guys to take a note right here. This guy's saying only 720p. This guy, for every one person like this, there's like 10 other people saying, bro, my internet's so shit, it can't even fucking run 480. <laughs> that meant for sure that this was going to be an easy one. Everyone who's raided with him knew that him being there meant that things were going to be fine. Unfortunately, that didn't really apply to him, but for everyone else who knows they're stronger than him, they could dismiss their worries since anything he could do, they could do for sure. Yep. It's safe, now, you know? It should be. On the example they used to show how weak he really is, the E-rank dungeon he got injured in was an anomaly many didn't even think to be possible. You see, while normally raids are almost always completed with a healer, because no one had ever gotten injured in an E-rank dungeon before, <laughs> Sung Jin Woo is the only one getting injured. The healer was necessary. They had decided to send in his party without one. So, when Sung Jin Woo did inevitably get hurt, the lack of a healer meant that he would have to spend the next week in a hospital, recovering from a wound that no one else thought was even possible. <laughs> Recovering from a wound that no one ever thought was even possible. 
<laughs> this is so disrespectful, but it's like that kind of shows how weak our dude is. Like the guild was like, you don't need a healer for this party, dude. This this raid is so simple. You can just fucking do it, no healer, just full aggro. But like Sung Jin was still in it, like still gets hurt. It shouldn't be possible. Why? Because they're trying to focus, emphasize that this dude is truly the weakest piece of shit there is. But if we take a guy that's the weakest and somehow should become the strongest, right? That's where the power fantasy lies. That would be the first part of Sung Jinu's introduction, but it's before we continue into the dungeon itself that we would first get an anime original scene with the chairman and his associate. Oh, anime only? He's not someone who shows up until a little bit later, but- Yo, look at him. Look at the aura exuding from him. You know, based on the scars on his face, like, he may be old, right? He may be working, like, a desk job as, like, the exec, but I feel like he's super strong. It'd be really cool to see him actually fight. He's the acting leader of the overall Hunter Association. Yeah, it leader. It makes sense to use him as an exposition tool. So he pretty Look much at those scars, man. Why dungeons can be so profitable, then went on to explain the lucrative market that's formed around it. They even like explain like how there's a difference between two types of materials and one's used for specific like like armor forging and money or currency and the others for like sustainable energy. Like I was really surprised that they would even go to detail about how Korea has to think about sustainable energy moving into the future and this is why it's so important to the ecosystem. I'm like, damn, usually anime never, you know, gives a shit about stuff like that, but okay. To hunters, dungeons are an easy way to make progressively more money than to the government the resources from said dungeons are a clean and efficient energy source. Mm -hmm. There's smaller details we don't find out till later on in the story, but I think revealing them now gives more motivation as to why certain things are the way they are in this world. It leans more into the idea that dungeons aren't just something that needs to be cleared, but have instead turned into this economy-defining industry, one that's deeply rooted itself in countries across the globe. Switching back to something a bit more local is the D-Rank raid that Sung Jinu is currently taking part in. A brief scene exclusive to the webcomic was the part where Song had asked whether he could be their leader or not. Oh yeah, it wasn't something this guy's a leader of our group. Like how we saw in the anime, but was instead a role he offered to take since he was the most experienced. I mean, okay. with a decade spent raiding and a high rank of C, it was only natural that he be the one to lead everyone. A decade? <laughs> wait, 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 wait. With a decade spent in ra in raiding in a high rank of C, uh, maybe I'm underestimating the ranks, right? Maybe C, maybe upper C rank is like super like OP and like dangerous compared to the average human being. But like when you mention C rank, I'm just thinking Dookie. Sure that he be the one to lead him. All right. In fact, if not for the fact that he was over sixty years old, Song skills as a mage would have. This dude's over sixty. God damn, he looks good for sixty. Added him a comfy spot in just about any guild. Cool. He was a competent hunter everyone present knew that they could count on. Dude, he's big chillin', yeah. I know I mentioned how most of these hunters already knew each other, but there's a different reason why Sung Jinu and Ijihi are so familiar with each other. Normally, Ijihi, I thought it was Jiwoo. Did I forget her name? I thought it was Jiwoo or some shit. wouldn't have ever interacted, but with her being essential and him, well, not. Their paths were fake. Because, like, sh they're, he's the only one that gets injured. So, like, her existence doesn't really matter. Right? Like, 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 no, 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 that, that's kind of wrong to say, but like, yeah, it's Yuhi, but like, she is the healer, but you don't need a healer for this raid, because it's so fucking easy, but he's still the only one that got fucking injured from the goblins, so like, it's kind of hilarious. They did to cross more times than you would think. What I mean is that, with Juhi being the essential healer that she is, it was only natural she be present at every raid Sung Jinu was at. Only to heal him. Was the rarest type of magic out of all of them. The Hunter Association had no choice but to ask a B rank like her to be present at every. Damn, I didn't realize that she's a fucking B rank. Yo, I mean, we were just hyping up Mr. Song, the leader of that. He was like raiding for decades in C class upper tier, but this is a B rank healer. Like, yo, that's kind of crazy, right? God damn. That's even funnier because the the hunter association is like, all right, we have this one really shitty dude named Sung Chun Mu. I, I need a B class healer just specifically for him. The gate that opened up, not the ones that the guilds were doing, but any left behind for the hunter association was one that Ijihi would be asked to be healer for. So with Sung Jin Woo getting injured at every gate, what started out as a freak accident quickly turned into a recurring incident that you're injured again question whether he was even supposed so to every be. time there yep. were about eight separate instances in which sung Jinu would have to be healed by her eight by then he was no longer at the point of being grateful for her saving him but was instead now just feeling bad for bad her always inconveniencing her Ugh. yeah i would honestly i i don't know why she cares about him though because like like what reason is there for juhi to care about him 
Maybe she's just a really nice girl. And she just sees that this kid is fucking putting himself out there getting injured every time over and over again. So this isn't really love. This is more like pity. I'm not really sure because if you really think about it from her perspective, it's probably like, shit, it's this kid again. I'm going to have to heal him. Like, are you sure? You should just quit. Please quit for your own sake. It fucking hurts me to heal you every single time. And he's like, goddamn, I'm so fucking weak. It's her again. She's going to heal me again. Oh, my God. It was a burden on her that he truly felt apologetic for. This would lead Juhi to ask why it is he doesn't just give up. But Money. But revealing personal Money. details wasn't something he wanted to share right now, Sung simply said it was to keep himself from dying of boredom. His excuse was that be- <laughs> That's your excuse? Dying of boredom? Bro, you're gonna die regardless with that this rate. Being a hunter was all just a hobby to him. Of okay. course, such an excuse didn't really fly with Juhi, but with nothing more to say, the most he could do was just chuckle at her. Now, to quantify just how much money certain essence stones are worth, the E rank ones are somewhere around eighty dollars, while the C rank ones. Wait, wait, wait! Eighty dollar USD? Wait, what? Okay, we have actual money figures. Sell for more like eight thousand. Damn, these blooms ones are like eight thousand USD. Yo, that's crazy. The difference of just a C rank. Yo, the jump between fucking E to C rank is great. Yeah, bro. And, and think about it, bro risked his life for $80, and even that was crazy, right? Like, even that, he was so happy about. So that just goes to show just how desperate, and just how in the bottom of the pit of despair he's in right now. Obviously, the lower rank stones aren't enough to make a livable wage off of, but with the higher ranks bringing in thousands of dollars Sheesh. each, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you just how much profit there could be in something like a C or B rank dungeon. Yeah, what about A? It's actually S? a small little calculation that we did on my stream the other day. Twitch.tv slash Smart guy, follow this channel, guys. Any news underscore. We talk more about solo leveling every Sunday. But back to the story. Look at that it hashtag ad. Smart guy. An extremely rare double dungeon was found. An occurrence Kay. so incredibly scarce that even with Mr. Song's 10 years of experience, never once had he ever come across one. So we think that it's smart to just go in one? Like, so it's so rare. I don't, I don't think they've ever done like an explanation of a double dungeon, right? I don't think so. They're like, oh, we cleared a dungeon and a different one opened up. So Mr. Song's never seen it before, but he's kind of heard of it. Like, I, I guess people are still at the end of the day just fueled by money, right? Because even the green puffy jacket guy was like, yo, I have like new mouth to feed. A second child is on its way. We got to like make more money. So at the end of the day, greed just blinded them. There was no doubt that this was what it was, though, since despite killing the boss that they thought was the boss, the gate still didn't show any signs of closing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So if you clear the dungeon, while the double dungeon has opened, you can't just leave, or even if you left, the gate would not close. So, do we ha- well, technically, couldn't you, like, if you could leave, call the fucking guild and be like, yo, double dungeon showed up, call some big boys over, we're not doing this. That- I feel like you should be doing that, right? It was a positive indicator that the real boss was still somewhere beyond this hidden passageway. The decision of choosing to explore it was quite the tough one, since even though the dungeon was easy up until this point, and even though it should technically remain easy all the way till the end, there was no guarantee it should. that any of this would be easy. It should. There were no guarantees when raiding a dungeon at all, and when it came to things like this, it really all depended on how much risk everyone was willing to take. A lot. So, with a total of 17 hunters present, the votes were cast and a decision made. Oh, it was a tiebreaker, right? Jin Wu fucking broke the tiebreaker. The potential riches awaiting them was worth the risk of whatever threats that they may come across. Whatever threats, as in just fucking dying. The passage turned out to be even longer than expected, though, since even after 40 minutes of walking, nothing seemed to indicate that they were getting anywhere. If the path had continued for 20 minutes more, then the group would have had no choice but to turn back and leave. Reason being that after a boss is defeated and dungeon cleared, the hunters within only have one hour to escape it. What? If they don't, then the gate will close and they'd be trapped. Wait, 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 what? One hour to escape it. You have one hour to escape and if you don't? If they don't, then the gate will close and they'd be trapped forever. Forever? This is a very interesting mechanic. You just be trapped forever if you don't bypass this like time limit? Wait, what? So if walking to the boss room was to take one hour or more, then the risk of getting trapped inside would be exponentially. Yo, this is even more dangerous. What the fuck? Yo, these people are even more stupid than I thought. Later. Sure, they could run and make it back in less than an hour, but with time also being needed to scavenge and gather loot, they would definitely be cutting it close and risk getting trapped forever. 
Yo, now, what the, the door fuck? Finally showed up that the peculiarity of such an entrance really did make everyone nervous. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. First of all, if you just like see a gate like that, like instinctively, you should be like, nope, I'm getting the fuck out of here. What purpose does there need to be a door this fucking tall, right? What kind of fucking monster uses a door this big? Well, it turns out there's fucking big ass fucking statues inside, right? Like, this is already red flag number one. But these idiots still entered. It was some sort of Dark Souls fog gate. Yeah, I mean, you, you just know. Don't fuck around. Intimidating to everyone, and the odd nature of its presence definitely instilled doubt. Song could tell that this was the case, so before they could let their uncertainties get the best of them, he quickly flipped the conversation by exploiting a few key logical fallacies. What? Not only did he use his position of power to instill fake confidence, but... So Mr. Song was kind of like hyping us up and giving us a fake sense of, uh, what's it called, safety right here? Because he wants that money? Let's see. He also applied guilt by saying he would continue alone if he had to. <laughs> go ahead, dude. Go kill yourself by yourself. I don't care. We could be the first ones to discover this new dungeon. So those who want to leave can head back. I'm going in. Even if it means going alone. I'd be like, goodbye, Mr. Song. I'll see you outside if you make it. Nate, no way. I'm going in, dude. So, by being this elder veteran and saying he would enter regardless, he had simultaneously eased all the anxiety everyone was feeling as well as- Eased the anxiety. Basically gaslit everybody by thinking like- by making them think that this shit's safe and it should be fine because, hey, we could be the- what's it called? A trailblazer for this new dungeon. Like, fuck that noise. So nope. Them into thinking they nope. Would be losing out if they didn't go. He had essentially single-handedly persuaded the group into walking towards their doom. Of what? course, the thought of becoming rich didn't help either, but that was more so hearsay from rumors. That's pretty cool that the webtoon kind of, you know, talked about this stuff, but in the anime, Mr. Song didn't, I don't know, we just kind of did a vote and we walked in, right? Sure, everyone says there's incredible treasures hidden within double dungeons, but the only real story was the small guild who apparently grew massive from one. So, double dungeons are so rare, the only news or only occurrence of a party clearing it was a small guild and they just happened to get super rich from one clear so i guess that's like the local legend an incentive why you want to clear this they okay. had supposedly found a double dungeon and used the profits from it to grow exponentially cool. practically overnight so with that being what everyone was potentially watching i mean if you say it like that it, it does seem very attractive right sometimes enough everybody has a price right and, and everybody's pretty desperate for money so if you have that kind of incentive, then I don't really blame them. But again, that door is so fucking big, dude. Walking away from, no one wanted to let Song get all the treasure for himself. Oh, Reason that was that? that? The way treasure worked when it came to raids was that, unlike essence stones which were procured individually, okay. treasure was divided equally among everyone. Proportionately, what okay. What that meant was that even if Sung jin didn't do any fighting... So as long as you participate, because you were present, the loot will be divided equally. Nice. By just being there at the end, he would get an equal cut of any treasure that was found. The rest was mental gymnastics going towards how the monsters should be just as easy as the earlier ones, and that was that for choosing whether to enter or not. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you just how massive the room they entered was, but to give yeah. you a true idea of its actual scale, this it is was a about boss the layer. size of four Olympic stadiums combined together. Four Olympic stadiums combined together? Bro, what the fuck? That's 320,000 square meters of open space or a I'm giant good. classroom with a diameter of two kilometers. No! The main statue was bigger than the Statue of Liberty, so in anime terms, that's even taller than the Colossal Titan. All in all, Taller than the Colossal Titan. It looks kind of ridiculous because from the webtoon scale, I mean, the humans are pretty small here, but bigger than the Colossal Titan is insane. All it was a truly grand Holy space shit. that no one could have even imagined. Now, I won't jump into the events of the disaster just yet, but what I will mention before ending this video is the runic inscription song has That's right. for everyone. This is the key, right? This is the secret to how to perhaps clear this double raid, right? Something about, like... Revere God, put your faith in God. There's some other one. Let's see what he says. These aren't words that can be found anywhere on Earth, but are instead a unique language solely discovered in dungeons. What? So this language is only in dungeons? That's kind of interesting. Sounds really important to the endgame plot of how these dungeons even became to be. They're also not words any normal human can decipher since only hunters capable of magic can read them. Okay. What I mean is that only the hunters who awakened to magic-related professions are capable of understanding the runic alphabet these words are written in. That's the weirdest thing too, because like the occurrence, like the like the 
when the gates started to open, right, out of nowhere, then humans started to at the same time get the same, you know, awakened powers. And now you're telling me these people that's awakened to magic can now decipher this language that's specific to dungeons. Clearly, there is such a strong tie between, like, a connection between the dungeons and, like, why people are getting powers, right? So, with that leading us towards the big cliffhanger, I think we can end things off here and pick things up next week. All right. You can be sure to find another solo leveling video right here on Monday or Tuesday. Ooh. If you want to know exactly when, then be sure to subscribe with notifications. Y'all know what to do. Please go like and use this video and subscribe to the channel if you're done. That's, we farmed this eminence in shadow videos so much, but this is always good to have another channel explain to us the things that we missed out and give us a little bit more insight on this like insider knowledge of the webtoons or the, the soul loving, uh, the novels. So many people are still so fucking annoying to say, oh, webtoon better, night novel better. Bro, it's been one episode. Let it have some time to cook. I bet the webtoon is great, but the anime adaptation so far, I think it's pretty fun. And next episode, I think it's going to be even more greatness.